when should I book my UCAT? What score do I need to get? How do I study? For the verbal reasoning, you need to feel the pain. Today, I'm gonna to go through the most common UCAT FAQs, worries. If you don't know me, my name's Dr. Hilton. I'm a doctor and a dentist, so have got into a UK medical degree twice. I've been teaching the UCAT for over 10 years, so check out my channel to find out more. So on my Instagram account, you may have seen some of the short snippets that we give of advice and the little practice questions that are gonna help you boost your score bit by bit. So on there, I ask people to submit some questions and over the course of the years, all of the most common frequent recurring questions I'm going to tackle now in this video for you. So by far the most common question that I get is something along the lines of how do I study? How long should I study for? How much time should I spend on it? So I actually talk about my three stage process here in this video in detail. And that whole playlist is gonna give you the really important high yield tips. But to go through it very quickly, yeah, I do it in three stages. The first is familiarization. So make sure you're using a really great resource to understand all of the questions that come up, the key techniques and the best way to go fast. The second is practice questions. Really important to just practice, practice, practice get the hang of it, get up to about 80% correct. And in the final stage, you want to be doing as much time practice as you can with a lot of mock tests. We actually talked about this quite a lot in this free talk I gave recently, which had some of my ex-students who went on my one-on-one -on -one coaching program and got a 3000 plus score and tell you exactly what they did in the two, three, four weeks leading up to the exam and what they did to make sure they got such a good score. So usually four to six weeks total for UCAT prep is good. What I would say, remember that it is a performance. It is like sprint training. If you sprint all day, all day, nonstop, then your speed is going to reduce. So what you need to do is make sure that you do short bursts. The exam's two hours, so I recommend two hour bursts for that. And just do a good stint of intense practice, take a break, relax, relax for maybe two, two three hours more and then come back and if you can do another session in the same day. The intensity from which you practice the same way as it is for a performance or if you're learning to do piano scales or for a recital under pressure, it's just knowing how to drill those skills to do them on demand when test day comes. Another question that I get really frequently is what score do I need to get? Now what I say to them is that is the wrong question to be asking. What you should be doing is saying how can I get the best possible score because as I teach on my one-on-one -on -one coaching program, we get students to get a 3000 plus and then once you get that sort of score you are in control and have your pick of the universities. Really what I would recommend is that you find out ways to get a 3000 plus score. You can check out a video here where I teach people exactly how I do that so I'd recommend by hitting the i button you can see all the videos that I recommend in this video to go away and watch after this. Another question is for the verbal reasoning do I read the question first or read the passage first? Now the shortcut tactic for this I would actually recommend watching my entire verbal reasoning playlist where I talk about this is I would divide the passages into three types long medium and short if it's short I would just read the entire thing if it's medium I would do the targeted read if it's really long I would consider flagging skipping going on to make sure that you get through all of the other passages of course if you flag make sure that you guess before you skip but then go back to it after and if you've got a bit more time then you can do a targeted read or just try something where you actually go through it but you've got to be really ruthless and super tactical about how you approach the UCAT, and that is one surefire way to do that. Another question is, how do I manage my time? Now, we talked about that in the previous question, but one of the things that I would recommend is that you need to feel the pain and understand just how time pressured the UCAT is. You may have heard of people saying it, but until you have understood it by attempting a mock, you won't truly understand it. That's why on my coaching program, I make people do a mock early on. And actually, we have released a mock that we did on YouTube here where we go through it, then we explain exactly for each question what the best answer is and what the best way to tackle it is. So if you want to try a mock UCAT test and try along with me here as I do it, check out that video here where you can go through everything and kind of understand just how fast paced it is. We do these mock UCAT tests every week on my elite coaching program. So if you wanted to think about joining, it's application only, but you can check that out. Last two questions. So the first one being, when should I book my UCAT? Now I always say there are three things you need to consider for the UCAT. You need to one, allow enough time to prepare. That is very personal to you, but I would say at least six weeks before you start phase one so that you can at least 
gauge how much time and intensity you're going to need. That also means that you want to minimally encroach on other things going on, whether that's school exams, whether it's other things going on, maybe you've got a big family wedding, whatever it is, just make sure that it's minimally impacted and impactful on other life things going on. And then the third thing is you want to do it enough so that you've got time for a plan B. That might be sitting the BMAT, sitting the GAMSAT, or just having the time to do some in-depth research as to what you can do if you get a UCAT score that wasn't kind of what you were hoping for. I do a video on what to do if you get a low UCAT score, which you can also check out on the channel. And the final and probably most important one is what is my ultimate tip for scoring highly in the UCAT? Well, like I say, the first stage is the fundamentals. Knowing the fundamentals is that go slow to go fast sort of mentality that you can implement to help you do really well. That is the most important thing. Get the fundamentals down and then practice, practice, practice. Just the same way that someone can teach you how to do scales on a piano, but you're never going to be able to perform. And that's what the UCAT is, it is a performance. You won't be able to do that until you sit down, do the questions, practice it. And eventually you start recognizing the patterns and you get so super quick. It's like a karate kid moment that once you've laid those basics, done a bit of practice, and kind of just really put the time in, you suddenly have those moments where everything just clicks and you want to make sure that you peak at the time for that performance to make sure that you really are where you need to be on game day and deliver on demand. So thank you for watching. I would recommend that you check out this playlist here where I give you my greatest hits of all the videos of UCAT and how to make sure that you score highly. Otherwise, I recommend if you wanna get some one-on-one -on -one help from me, check out this video here and find out how we can help you get a 3000 plus score. So thanks for watching and I will see you over in one of those videos. Also, best of luck with your UCAT.